Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so happy to see you today. My name is Teacher Regina, and we are going to learn a lesson about a new world from the book of Genesis 1, verse 1 to 25. And our memory verse for today is from the book of Genesis 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So creation means to make something, to make something out of nothing. And only God can do such a miracle. So in Genesis 1, 1 and 2, we describe earth, how God created it. So, and God created all these things in six days. And in the first day, God created light. It was dark and God said, let there be light, and the light was there. And that was very wonderful to see that. And on the second day, God created the sky. You can see in this picture. It is very bright. God created this. He said, let, the light, let there be light. And on the second day, God created the sky. And everything that God was created was very beautiful. And on the third day, God created the land and the plants. All the vegetation that you see here, the green grass, the flowers, the land, God created it. And on the fourth day, God created light, sun, moon, and stars. And on the fifth day, God created the fish in water and the flying birds. And when God created all things, all those things that God created were very nice. And you could see, have you ever seen birds and, and fishes? So they look very beautiful, and that's how God created everything to be beautiful. And on the sixth day, God created us, human beings, and all the animals that you can see on the land. God created daddy, mommy, animals, lion, elephant, giraffe, all those animals you see on the land. God created it, and it looks very, it looks very nice, and the vegetation looks very good. So, when God, God spoke and said, let the light appear, and the light was there, God called the light day. God called the light day, that is day, when we are going, when we are going to work, we are going to school in the morning, when you are coming, you are going to play, that is the day. And God said, let the, the light, and that said, that was day. And in the evening, when when then it was evening, God created that say that let be the darkness, and that is evening. It's called it called it it called it night. So, and God said because people have worked all the day in the morning, we've gone to work, we've gone to school, we've gone for swimming, we are playing with our friends. God sees that because at night people are supposed to sleep and rest because our bodies need that rest so that we can we can we can get energy energy to move on again the next day. So. When God created the space, he called it the sky, the sky. And that sky, is it's blue in color. You can see the sky during the day. And during the night, you can see some stars, the moon. And you, maybe you can tell your daddy and mommy to bring you outside. You see the stars at night. They are very beautiful and they are very colorful at night. Maybe you could just count those stars and see. So, do you like to see the stars at night? You can as well, if you want to see the stars at night, you can come and maybe you count the stars at night. So God now was ready to make the living creatures to swim. Like when, so, so God, God made on the, on, and God, God, the third day, God made land and plants. So he called the dry land, he called, he called the dry, he called the dry land and the water he called the sea. God was now ready to make the beautiful land. When you see the plants outside, all those God created them. So on the fifth day, on the so God God was ready on that God was now ready to make some living creatures on the fifth day. He made all kind of fishes to swim in water. He made he made whales to live in, to swim and to swim in the seas, and he made big animals like birds to fly on the land. So we are now ready to know this, that God on the sixth day, he made animals such as cows, sheep, horses, and the earth now was very beautiful, but something was missing. Can you guess that something that was missing on that day? So there were no people to take care of those animals. There were fishes, there were plants, all these animals you can see here. You can see the vegetations, 
the, 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 the waters, the sea there, you can see all these animals. You can see monkey, there is a lion, there's giraffe, there are ostriches, there are rhinos inside water, drinking water, and all these vegetations. All of them were on, the, on there, but it was very beautiful. But guess one thing, there were nobody to take care of these things, all these animals. There were nobody to, to plant the plants, to weed the plants, and to put to, 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 to water our, the plants. So God said, I must create a human being. So now God created that man. So there were nobody to take care of those animals. So God made man from dust. God made us from dust. God made human being from dust. God took some dust and he just breathed on it, on his nostril, and somebody began, and somebody appeared. So that person, we were created by God to take care of all these plants. So our good boys and girls, you are supposed to take care of this creation that God created. We are not supposed to kill those birds that God created them. We are supposed to water all the plants in our compounds, to, to dig and plant the plants, to water them so that they can be, look so beautiful. So that's how God made us to, to take care of all the plants on the heart. And we are supposed to take care because those all of them are God's creation. Are we together, boys and girls? Yes, so God made a lovely place for us to sleep, a lovely place for us to, to live. When you go home, you can see our compounds are very clean, Everything are very nice. God made them, so you are supposed to take care of them. Is that okay, boys and girls? Yes. So, so when God, we are in God, we should remember to give thanks all the time. All things that we are doing, we are supposed to say thanks for what God did in our creation. God created animals. We are supposed to take care of them, and all the time we are supposed to be grateful for what God did. Is it okay, good boys and girls? So let's please read, remember, remind us our memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Genesis 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. All those things that you see here on earth, God created them, and they are very beautiful. So we are supposed to take care of them. Are we together? Yes. So have you ever given, have you... Have you ever given your soul that live forever? Have you ever that have that soul that can live forever? So if not, there is no better time to do so. If you've never given your life to Christ, you can make this prayer with me. We can, you can pray after me. Say, dear Lord, make me my whole again. Remove all the sins in my body, my God. Remove all the sins that I've sinned, and you make me whole again. So you pray that prayer, and God will help you. Maybe you can close our eyes for the word of prayer. Thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you for our children, my Father God. And thank you for the lessons that we've learned, my Father God. I want to pray that these children can put it on practice, my Father God, and put an example of what we've said, my Father God. We've said that you are supposed to, you are created in your own image, my Father God, and you are supposed to take care of this, the creation, the creation, my Father God. Help us, God, so that we may take care of the plants, all the animals in our heart, my Father God, and all the time you sanctify our heart to cleanse our heart all the time, my Father God. I pray that us believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, good boys and girls, for listening at, to me. I was so grateful that you've listened and you've taken your time to listen to the word of God. And it's my prayer that we put that what we've learned in our put what we've learned in our practices. Let's take care of our plants. Let's take care of our animals that God created so that God hold it. And we say we must be grateful to God for what He did for us. Thank you very much, good boys and girls. See you next time. Thank you.
Psalm 31, 15. My future is in your hands. That means that God doesn't only take care of us today, but he also takes care of us tomorrow. And the next day. And the next. And the next. And forever. Into infinity. Good morning, children. This is another day that we are glorifying God as we come to learn about his word. But before we start with the word, let us pray. Close your eyes, put your hands together and bow your heads and let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you for this morning, for you have loved us, Jehovah God, that we saw this day. Thank you, Father, as we have come before to learn your word. May your Holy Spirit lead us and even teach us. Bless these children as they listen, Father, to your word, that they may keep your commandments and love you always. We thank you. We love you. As we start, start with us. And when we end, may honor and glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Today we are going to start our lesson by looking at our memory verse. As Jesus was walking in this world those days, he used to teach his disciples about loving God. And the verse that he to, the, the word that he told them shows here, that is Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. He told them, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is what he told his disciples. So I would want you to repeat this verse because even us, that is how we are supposed to live. Say after me, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Thank you. Now when we look at this verse, it shows in our lives that we should always wish to please God because he's the one who leads and guides us in our lives. There were some two children. Here one was called Kim. He loved music. And he used to attend his music lessons and he used to love the teacher and even he could stay with the teacher for five hours practicing how to play piano. So after some time, she became perfect. There was this other child who was called Josie. Josie also had the same teacher and the same class, but he used to love the dreaming and he never even attended lessons. Now, which of the two children do you think that will learn the music? Now, let us look at this verse in another way. The first part, it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. God commands us in his word to love him. And as we love him with all our heart, we should be joyful. And the second part, it tells us that we should love the Lord with all our soul. By loving others and showing them about God, it so shows that we are loving God with, our, with all our soul. Then it tells us to love the Lord with all our mind. This one is telling us to choose the Lord and obey him in everything you do. For the saved child, remember that the Lord wants you to love him with, and be loyal with him, loving him completely with all you have. For the unsaved child, you can't love God if you have, no, you have not received Jesus in your heart. And at the end of the lesson, we will go through the lesson that we will, you will see why it is important to accept the Lord God in your heart. Now, when we look at uh, as a, a life of a Christian, we were created with a want to sin. But God wants us to be loyal to him, to love him, and always to live for him so that we may not sin. When we look at the children of Israel, when we look at the children of Israel those days, Moses is the one who was leading them. And you remember they had been ca uh, captives in Egypt. And Moses brought them from Egypt through the desert. And when his time was up, Jesus, uh, God told him that Joshua was to lead the children of Israel to Canaan. And Joshua went with them. They conquered so many 
cities, and he, they displaced the people because that is where God wanted them to live. Now Joshua, after he had done everything, and as he, 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 he led them, he always reminded them about the word of God. He always reminded them about the word of God. After now he was old and advanced in years, he gathered the children of Israel together and told them, the land you have lived is a land of the people that worshipped idols. In our picture there, you can see there is an idol at the side. Now, class, what is an idol? Can somebody tell us? Yes? Yeah, you have tried. An idol is anything we put before God. Instead of, uh, for example, going to church, we can choose to play the best game or listen to the best, uh, watch the best cartoon. That were anything you put before God that is an idol. So the children, Joshua, before he died, um, he called the children of Israel and taught them that they should never worship the idols of the land. Even as God was conquering and sending the people away and displacing them for, for, for the children of Israel, it is not that he hated the people, but he didn't like the way they worshipped the idol. So Joshua told them not to serve them. And the people said, since our God, we know him and he has done so much for us, we cannot stop serving him. But Joshua told them, you know, I know the Lord, your God. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He didn't want anything to come between you and him. But the people said that they would serve the Lord only. Joshua knew them because he knew there were people at this time they were serving the Lord and another time they could go away. Now Joshua kept telling them they were to keep away from the people who did not love God. Even for us children, when you associate with the people who do not love God, who put things before them instead of God, remember that we are told not to stay with them because as we learn about them, we may, we may learn their ways and forget God. So he told the, the, the people of Israel not to do that. And the, the people said, yes, we, we will love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our, our soul, and with all our mind. Then he told them, then throw away the idols that you have and give yourselves completely to God. Meaning when they went there, through the friends they met, they already they had acquired some idols. So Joshua was beseeching them to throw them away. So when we look at the time of Joshua, since he was very old, he was already 120 years old, he died and rested with his forefathers. And the, 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 the children of Israel still continued serving the Lord although sometimes they could forget. But there are some elders, there are some people who outlived Joshua who kept teaching them about the Lord. But there came a time when even these elders died. When you look at this picture, even, even these elders, they died. And these people started serving idols. God was not happy with them. He was not happy with them. Imagine he had to send an angel from heaven to come and talk to these people and tell them, remember the way the Lord, your God, took you from Egypt. He has given you this beautiful land. You have come and you have started serving idols. So you can imagine the people uh, when they heard that, that even God himself has sent his angels to tell them. They wept. They really cried. Sometimes they may not cry because they are remorseful, but because they were caught. They were known what, why, how they had refused God and yet they had promised to serve God. So that day they were remorseful. We can see them here. They were remorseful. They showed they were sad. And they promised to love the Lord their God. So even us, sometimes we go away from God. And since he has said we love him with all 
our, our, our hearts, with all our soul and with all our mind, sometimes we are caught and we become remorseful, not because we, 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 are, uh, we are sorry, but because we've been caught. The same with the children of Israel. But now they cried, they remembered how Moses and the elders had taught them. That is why they were crying. So the Lord, when he sent his angel, they promised not to do it again. They promised not to do it and not to worship the idols again. So they promised the Lord that they would not do it again. And what they did, they sacrificed to God. Now they, 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 they piled the stones together and looked for a, uh, the, for a lamb, an animal without blemish, and they sacrificed it. That is, the blood was supposed to cleanse their sins. Now this, the, 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 this lamb, this blood could not cleanse sins once and for all. So they had to sin and sacrifice again and sacrifice again. But the Lord, but God gave us his son Jesus Christ, to come and be a sacrifice once and for all. Now, for those who have received the Lord Jesus Christ, they are happy because the, his blood has cleansed them in their lives. And they can please him, they can love him, and they can always go to him when they need to know more about God and even how to live for him. But the children of Israel, they had to keep sacrificing their sin and then they sacrificed. So it came a time after they had done this, they, they forgot God again. So they could go and start worshiping the idols again. So the Lord could, the, God could make the people. He told them, now if you have decided to worship the idols, I will not drive the people who are remaining in the land. And you know God had promised that he would drive away all the people who are remaining in the land so that the children of Israel could be, could be saved from the sins. So they could go, they could cry again. But this time God just let them go their own way and let the people oppress them, the ones who are in the land. So even for us, sometimes... God wants us through his word. He wants us through uh, the preachings in Sunday school and even in church. But sometimes we have a want to do sin. We should always remember that he loves us so much and he wants us to live with him in heaven. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And no one can say that, that they have not sinned because when we look at Romans chapter 3, Chapter 23, verse 3 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we need Jesus to cleanse us of our sins. Now, God deserved the first place in Israelites' lives, but they were not loyal to him. Instead, they ignored his commands and followed their own ways, and thou they were hearing what the results of their disobedience was. When we look at ourselves in our lives, we are just commanded to receive the Lord Jesus in our lives so that he may cleanse us of our sins, so that in the end we may see God, because that is the only way. And remove the want to sin, feeling in us. And when we have received him, we go to our memory verse that says that we should always love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our mind. And when we go before the Lord, he's going to cleanse us, he's going to forgive us. And always, when we call upon him, he will be found by us. Now, as a child of God, we should always remember that we should refuse the company of those who do not love God, of those who do things that do not please God. Because when we walk with them, we are going to forget God and we will start doing bad things. Now, for the child who have received the Lord, as we said when we started, this child uh, must always keep loving God and reading his word and attending Sunday school or where there is the word of God so that they may keep loving the Lord. 
For the unsaved child, this is the time now we would ask you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ so that he will be able to, to guide your life, so that he will be able to lead you in all that you do. And even for, uh, as, as the end of this life, we will see him in heaven because he went in heaven and he said he will come back for us, those who love him. So for the unsaved child, this is your opportunity for you to receive him so that when you die, you'll be able to meet him in heaven. Now, is there anyone who'd want to receive the Lord as his personal savior? Put up your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now we are going to bow our heads and for those who have put up their hands, we'll repeat this after me. Lord God, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive my sins. Write my name in the book of life. This I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. If you have prayed that prayer, now you are a child of God. And when Jesus comes back, he will take you to heaven. So now, you are, to get, you, 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 you are in the same group with these others who have received the Lord God. What should we do after we have received the Lord? We pray always. You pray every time, before you eat, before you sleep, and even during the day. When we have a problem, we go to him and tell him through prayer. Another thing is we read the word of God. And as we read the word of God, we start reading from the book of Matthew, the gospel. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We learn about the love, uh, the, the, the life of Jesus, the way he lived on this earth, so that we may understand it better. Then, afterwards, now we read the other part of the Bible. And now, we should always learn to please the Lord and to walk with those who love God. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the way you've been patient and we hope that you have learned something. We thank the Lord and before we close, let us bow down and pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us into your word, Father. May this word grow in us. May this word grow in these children. That, Lord God, they may live for you and they may live the company that do not please you, Father. That, that, Lord, they may be also want to tell others about you. Thank you, Father, for you are good God. Until we meet again, Lord, for your word, this one we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So until we meet next time, thank you and bye. See you again. Thank you. Beautiful name.